This is a very common little USB light from eBay and I bought this a long time ago. They're not that expensive. The whole point is that it's got a fairly, it's got a very focused, it projects a very narrow beam of light out the end. It's got quite a strong lens in it. It's got a little slide switch on the side for turning it on and off and at the end it's got the little charging circuit and I'm guessing, hold on, I can't remember if it's got little LEDs in there or not to show you that. Let's find a, let's find a charge lead that isn't going to cause an avalanche here. That charge lead is going to cause an avalanche. Let's stuff a charge lead in the end and plug it into a little USB power bank. Let's get the little pink one in. And it's charging. I can see a little blue dot of light down there. So I don't know what those other, other holes are for. Okay, right. Let's take it to bits. I did uh, start taking it to bits before. I wanted to change the LED in it, but uh, having uh, gripped the end of this and tried to get it off, it wasn't giving an awful lot of access. Let's uh, see what we can do here. Is this going to come out? Oh, right, okay. So this comes out and there's a little plastic liner in there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's uh, get some light down it. Hmm. So there's a little liner down there with a standard LED in it. I wonder uh, if that is going to come out if I was to grip it like this. Is it going to move? Oh, that's just pinged, right? So the little plastic sleeve was separate and has now pinged, right? There it is, I found it. It's a separate plastic sleeve. This is, I'm getting further than I did uh, last time. I decided to stop and wait for the rest of you to arrive before I did any more. Okay, I can see it's got a little sort of buggy, if you will, that carries everything else. Let's uh, get this off. Ping. And I think I'm going to have to get the end of this off. Uh, how am I going to do that? It's quite narrow. I think I might use my schnips just to nip the side of this and try and... This may not work. This ain't going to work. That is pressed in so tightly. What can I use? I don't think the spudger is going to be of any assistance here. Where is my spudger? The spudger is, is not visible. What have I done with it? It's buried. I really, I, really, I need another tidy up here. Here's a spudger. And talking of spudgers, I recently bought a new one. I thought, since this one's wearing out, I'm going to destroy it at some point. So I went online and I got the new Isis Samo spudger. I've had great results with the, the, this original Isis Samo. It's just the right, it's really just almost like the right scientifically accurate type of steel. It's the correct thickness. It's got a very slight taper in that bit. So I bought another one and Interesting, this one says, invented and made in Italy, on this one. So that's quite nice, it's Italian made. This one says, and this is an Isis Samo, with their new trademark thing, make sure the copies don't have this, which means the Chinese will now be punching that in the end of theirs as well. It just says, designed in Italy, or invented in Italy. Uh, it doesn't say made in Italy anymore. Uh, but I do have a spare now with that very slight charm from the end there. And I also got some copies, and the copies actually came in a pack of five. Uh, do I have them in the vicinity? No, I don't. Okay. Anyway, there were five of them just in a sort of like a concertina plastic pack. And based on my experience of uh, other cheapy ones, the metal will just distort and crinkle. So I'm not, uh, I'll give it a go, but I'm not holding my breath for this one. I like the way it says, unlimited innovation, the opening tool. Unlimited innovation in ripping off Isisamo, apparently. Because uh, it is, to all intents and purposes, it's an Isisamo knockoff. Anyway, I digress. Again. So let's uh, see if this can, because it's got the fine tip. I don't know if this is actually going to get in there. Can I push it out from the other end? This might be glued, which would just be a bit of a grind. Yeah, I've got the feeling that is going to be a bit terminal getting that out. I think it is glued. Um, is anything likely? How is this switch done? Is it going to slide out of this switch? No, it can't. I wonder how they put that in then to trap that switch in position. Am I going to be able to push it out from this end? I do think that's glued, so I'm not holding much hope here. I think it's going to be destructive. I think we may just actually squeeze this. Just give it a wee tiny little... Oh, oh, that, that kind of... That was a promising squeeze. It did look as though it kind of... It folded out a bit there. It wasn't happy about it, but then again, nothing ever is when I get my hands on it. Right, this is looking promising. 
at the risk of nipping fingers. All right, this is, this is good, this is good. So now we have this little circuit board here that is being blocked from this by this switch. What if I push it the other way? Where's a screwdriver that I can get down there and push it up the other way? That switch blocks it. Do I rotate it to get it away from that switch? Oh, the little charge circuit board has popped out with a buggy. Don't necessarily want that. Do I want to short the battery out? Uh, do I just use unreasonable force to get into this? And then we can work out what happened afterwards. I think we'll use unreasonable force. Unreasonable force works like that. That was quite easy. It's not what I was expecting. This is actually just interfacing with a little plastic slider in there. And this should now, theoretically, just mush out. So it's got an electronic cigarette type battery in it. In quite a nice isolated little area. I'm not sure the capacity of this will be. I never did a capacity test in it. The LED is fully changeable. It's got a little switch here. Uh, it's got a little resistor in series, the LED. The resistor's value is... I should actually be zooming down here so you can actually see, shouldn't I? Okay, the resistor's value is... Steams up. Oh, that is a tiny resistor. That's one of these little microscopic ones. 4.7 ohms. It's not a very high value resistor. Uh, the charge circuitry has a little 6-pin generic charge circuit on it. It's got one LED there. Uh, it's got a capacitor, a couple of resistors. I'm guessing one resistor will be in series the LED and the other will set the charge current because that's going to be a TP4054 or 4056 type device, isn't it? Oh, and this little wiring. It's got a little channel for the wiring. And this is held in with sellotape. That's very impressive. And then it just, basically, it's just a little parallel connection. So the black and white are going to the battery. And then the blue and red are coming off the battery and going out to the LED. And that's fundamentally, it will rely on the fact that the LED will stop conducting around about the sort of 2.5 volt mark. Because uh, they don't really, the white LEDs won't conduct really below that. Uh, and that will stop the cell from being grossly over-discharged. I don't know what the capacity of this cell is. I suppose I could just carefully take a kniff and slit the tape. And then get that cell out. Does it say anything on it? No, it does not. But what I could do, this could take a while. Yeah, I'll do that. I shall fully discharge it. And then I'll recharge it. And then we'll know uh, what it's taking. Uh, here's here's something we could do. This is going to be a bit delicate, right? We'll zoom out for this. I shall grab the little dinky clamp meter. I'm not sure how accurate this is going to be. And we'll put it around like this. And we'll turn it on to its low current setting. We'll select uh, DC current. A thing with these clamp meters, you always have to zero out because as you move it about, if there's any magnetism gets in the way, if I was to take this little magnet and you know, disturb it, you'll see the current range uh, modulates and it needs calibrated out continually to null that out. And then you carefully turn it on. Oh, it's 100 milliamps. That's a bit beefy for that LED, is it not? That is pushing that LED quite hard. Not designed for continuous use. Okay. 100 milliamps it is. Right, okay. I shall uh, I shall do this test with a couple of charge discharge cycles. And then we shall uh, see what the capacity of this cell is. You're allowed to make guesses. I shall leave uh, the capacity, mesh capacity, down in the description down below. But you know what? For the money, uh, it's just what you'd expect. It's the little charge module. It's the lithium cell. It's uh, just a switch, resistor, LED. You can change them. You can get all the stuff out. These caps are just... This must have been glued in. Was this glued in or was it just a very friction fit? Oh, I can see a little line of glue. It was glued in. But uh, that can be fixed. And the switch was clever. The fact they've got this little thing just sits on that fits the curve, and then once it's in position, this uh, slider switch then clicks down on that. That's very neat. It's a very nice design. It's very clever.